We have our new women's 200 meter Olympic champion, Gabby Thomas, she ran 21.83. As promised, we're going to do a breakdown on the things that she did well in order to accomplish that amazing feat. The main thing going into the race was how was Gabby Thomas going to be able to get out of the blocks just because she's going against Julian Alfred, who won the 100 meter gold, did a great job with her start with her acceleration. And that's why Gabby Thomas wanted to be able to keep it close. It was a advantage to have Gabby Thomas behind here. So then she was able to make up the stagger pretty quickly, which is exactly what she did. We'll go into the start. So Gabby Thomas did a really good job of just getting right into pushing and getting a lot of length out of those first few steps. I mean, that's one of her biggest strengths is she's very tall. She is 5'9", where Julian Alfred is 5'7". So again, we see a great job of her just being able to pick up a lot of distance per step. She's a little high with the heel recovery. A lot of times we'll coach athletes to be able to keep that heel a little bit closer to the ground, but she's able to use that extra length that she gets or the extra height that she gets out of the heels to really make it so she can get good horizontal force. And she does a really good job of being able to maintain good hip flexion as she's accelerating. That's going to be a big part of being able to really generate a lot of acceleration, a lot of speed very early on. The more you can get those knees out in front, feet out in front, then the better position you're going to be able to get into when it comes to your acceleration, especially with the top end speed that Gabby Thomas has. And she's just in a great place to be able to finish this race very strong. So we have Julian Alfred there on the outside, Gabby Thomas. We have Brittany Brown. We ended up coming up in third. There's a lot of USA sprinters that were competing. But in this position right here, this is not where Julian Alfred wanted to be. She wanted to be out in front as they're coming around the curve just to then rely on her finish to be able to hopefully outlast Gabby Thomas. But when they came around the curve, Gabby Thomas being in front, it really kind of solidified the fact that she was probably going to be able to win this. I mean, Julian Alfred made up a little bit here as she got around the curve, but she just didn't have enough to be able to make up with that length that Gabby Thomas has. And that's what's just amazing with her. I just love being able to see her stride. She does a great job of being able to create so much extension out of her legs and she just gets so much range within her hips within her legs you can see the angle at 125 that's usually about where we want it to be and you can just see how strong she is within the hips within the hamstrings uh, and even within the low back in order to be able to do that you have to have a lot of strength within the low back and what you have to be able to do is as this foot's coming off the ground get into this extension, but be very quick and being able to bend that knee to make it so then you can get the heel kind of right up to the hips, right up to the butt like that. And that you have to do that very quickly in order for this to be able to happen. I see a lot of times athletes will end up having the knee out in front of the hip as that heel is coming underneath where you'd see a good job. She is able to bend the knee very quickly to make it so that heel comes right up. This is what Noah Lyle does really well as well is just gets that heel straight up to then be able to get right underneath and really extend out in front. That's a rare thing that not all athletes are able to accomplish. And she just does it such a high level there and is able to do it for a lot of steps. It's not an easy thing to be able to sustain either. Sometimes you could do it for a few steps, but to be able to do it for a good 30, 40 steps as she's running down the final stretch here is very impressive and just shows the strength that she has within the lower body as well as the very effective range of motion that she has within like the hip flexors and the lower body as well. I would say that maybe she could do a better job to have get the foot off the ground a little bit quicker. She seems to be a little long with the foot contact time, a little bit out in front with her landing. I mean, these are all looking at very small semantics here, but just something that I would say kind of stands out within her running. She's a little bit, again, out in front, a little bit on the back part of the foot as she's landing there, but so many things that she does great. Look at the ability to really open up within the arm swing. Some people will talk about how you want to be able to be symmetrical on both sides there. Uh, I would disagree. I think that it's important to have one side that goes a little bit more kind of straight back and has a little bit more extension. We could see that within the right side. And then another side that gets a little bit more off to the side, which we could see is more of her left side, which then allows you to be able to utilize the core more and create more force within the transverse plane. And that's what she's doing by getting more outside with that left side. It makes it so now there's a lot more rotation that happens within the core, which is an important part of the abs 
that will make it so then you could go and get more extension and create more force within the lower body. Running fast is a lot about how we're striking the ground, and it's important to be able to control your arms and your upper body to be able to strike the ground more effectively. If you don't have the proper coordination, the proper ability within the upper body, then it makes striking the ground very difficult to be able to do consistently. But if you have good rhythm, good timing within the upper body and a lot of core strength, it allows you to be able to strike the ground, not only with a lot of force, but also with the foot in the right position where you want to have that foot as best as you can to be right underneath you. Like right here, you can see that's a very good step. She has a lot of her weight forward. And again, I mean, which you could probably have her foot a little bit more underneath her, but obviously this isn't a huge problem where it's really impacting a run she just ran sub 22 in the 200 and is the fastest woman in the world so uh, a great run congratulations to gabby thomas and i hope that this helped in being able to just look at some of the things that are important when it comes to your running stride and, and really open up your eyes to some of the things that go into sprinting mechanics if you're a young athlete looking to be able to run faster we do have programs and things like that to be able to help you out with your speed but really the main thing was to be able to showcase gabby thomas the fastest woman in the world the olympic champion 200 meter i know she's been working on this following her for a long time now and the fact that she was able to achieve it is just very motivating and inspiring so it just shows that we could all accomplish our dreams if we really put in the time and the energy and the effort and, and have the belief that we can actually do that so uh, obviously this is a huge accomplishment for the u.s as well to be able to win a 200 meter final we haven't done that for a while the jamaicans have really been dominating and with sharika jackson hurting her hamstring praying that she is able to recover quickly and gets back to full strength and is able to compete at the highest level again i think that her and gabby thomas both being able to go at it with them both being healthy and able to really showcase what each other can do it would be a great opportunity to potentially see a world record broken i think within the the men and women's 100 and 200 the record that is going to go down the fastest is going to be the women's 200 meter uh, and i think that both gabby thomas and shariki jackson can do that just got to be able to get healthy and and make the uh, required adjustments to be able to achieve that. So would love to hear what you guys think of the final down below. What do you think of some of the things that I talked about within the sprinting mechanics? If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down below. Like and subscribe. And we'll also have a couple other videos that you can take a look at that have to do with the Olympics. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.